Welcome to a new episode of The Criminal Library. Today, we delve into the dark recesses of the human mind to explore a case that shocked Spain in 2011, and that has left an indelible mark on the community of Degana, Asturias. Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez, a 42-year-old miner from Leon, carried out a horrific massacre in the early morning of May 23, 2011. In an act of spite and revenge, this man brutally stabbed his ex-wife's father, brother and boyfriend, also leaving injuries to his ex-partner and his ex-mother-in-law. This story of violence and terror unfolded while the couple's children, just 6 and 11 years old, were at home. The victims were surprised while they were sleeping, attacked with a large machete, in what was revealed as a disturbing case of sexist violence. The tragedy unleashed by Alvarez Fernandez shook the local community and generated a national debate about domestic violence and the measures necessary to protect potential victims. Sentenced to 89 years and two months in prison, this case remains a grim reminder of the human capacity for cruelty. Join us as we unravel the details of this chilling case, explore the psychological profile of Jose Manuel, and seek to understand the incomprehensible. Degana's Triple Crime is a story of love, hate, revenge and tragedy, and we invite you to explore it with us in The Criminal Library. We start. The Triple Crime of Degana. Classification, Killer. Characteristics, Spite, Revenge. Number of Victims, 3. Date of Crime, May 23, 2011. Arrest Date, Same Day. Date of Birth, 1969. Victims, Jorge Marquez, 36, Roberto Burgos, 33, and Manuel Unhel Burgos, 61, the boyfriend, brother and father of his ex-wife. Method of Crime, Stabbing. Location, Degana, Asturias, Spain. Status, sentenced to 89 years and two months in prison on February 20, 2014. Jose Manuel Alvarez, a man kills the father, brother and boyfriend of his ex-partner in Asturias. May 23, 2011. Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez, a 42-year-old miner from Leon, killed three relatives of her ex-partner this morning with a large machete, in addition to injuring her and her mother, in the Asturian town of Degano. The three deceased are the father, brother and boyfriend of the ex-partner of the alleged murderer, who surprised the victims while they were sleeping at the ex-partner's home after destroying the door with a mace. In the house were the children he had with the woman, ages 6 and 11, who were not attacked or witnessed the events. The data was provided this afternoon by the government delegate in Asturias, Antonio Trevin, at a press conference in which he was accompanied by the chief colonel of the Civil Guard of Asturias, Jose Maria Feliz, and the lieutenant colonel of the Oviedo Command, Eduardo Martinez. The fatalities are the boyfriend of the ex-partner of the aggressor, 36 years old, her father, 61 years old, and her brother, 33 years old. The two people injured are the ex-partner, who was elected yesterday as a socialist councillor for the Degana City Council, and her mother. This has been admitted to the Cangas del Narcia Hospital, Asturias, with injuries that are not serious, while her daughter has been transferred to the University Hospital of Oviedo, where she has been admitted with a stab wound that affects a lung although his life is not in danger. The three deceased had multiple deep stab wounds, which reveals that they tried to defend themselves from the alleged murderer, who would have surprised them while they were sleeping, according to the civil guard's account. It was the ex-partner who, at around 5.45 am this morning, finding herself already injured, asked the armed forces for help. Once at the house, located in the Otero de Degana neighborhood, a mining council bordering Leon with just over 1,200 inhabitants, the agent surprised a vehicle that fled at high speed, colliding with the car patrol. A few hours later, the alleged perpetrator of the triple crime, a resident of the Leonese town of Villablino, was arrested at a civil guard control in the nearby town of Torino. The arrested man worked as a miner at Coto Monero Cantabrico, a company of the Vittorino Alonso Group, according to sources from the Villablino City Council. 
Although the specific causes that triggered the tragedy are unknown, the civil guard assumes for sure that it is a new case of sexist violence despite the fact that the aggressor did not have a police record nor had his ex-partner filed any complaint against him for ill treatment. During the press conference, the colonel in charge of the civil guard of Asturias has appealed to women potential victims of sexist violence to go to the barracks without shame, modesty, or doubt because, when in doubt, you always have to go too far. Some 200 people have gathered this afternoon in front of the Torino City Hall to show their rejection of the triple crime committed in Degana, since one of the deceased was a teacher in Matarosa del Sil, a district of that Leonese municipality. A Leonese minor kills the father, brother and boyfriend of his ex-wife with machetes in Degano. May 24, 2011 Jose Manuel Alvarez, 42 years old and who had been separated for two years, also injured his ex-wife, Silvia Brugos, elected counselor of the PSOE in the council, and his ex-mother-in-law, before their children, aged 10 and 6. A 42-year-old miner from Leon perpetrated an authentic massacre in Degana at around half past five in the morning yesterday by allegedly murdering with machetes the father, brother and boyfriend of his ex-wife, Silvia Burgos Rodriguez, elected counselor of the PSOE in the aforementioned council. The alleged attacker, Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez, separated from Silvia for two years, also injured his ex-partner and her ex-mother-in-law, the first seriously. The triple crime was committed in the presence of the children of the alleged murderer and his 16-year-old ex-wife, who heard everything that had happened and even watched as his father assaulted his grandmother in the room where the children slept. After committing the crime, the man fled, colliding with a civil guard patrol car that was arriving at the scene of the crime at that moment, alerted by Silvia Burgos. He was arrested shortly after in the town of Matarosa, Matarosa, Del Sil, Leon, where one of the murdered, the boyfriend of Silvia Brugos, worked as a teacher. Silvia Brugos's family feared that the minor, a man with a bad character, and who had drug problems, would attack her ex-wife, whom he called at dawn to threaten her. However, yesterday they assured that they never imagined that he would commit the orgy of blood that he perpetrated and that has left the Council of Degana completely shocked. The film of the massacre begins on Sunday afternoon, 22 M, Jose Manuel Alvarez had custody of the children during the weekend. The residents of Caboels saw them playing with their grandmother in his house and also walking through the paths of the Leonese town. At around half past eight in the afternoon, Jose Manuel Alvarez took his two children to the house of his ex-wife in the Otero de Degana neighborhood, a two-story single-family home. There he found that his ex-wife's boyfriend, Jorge Marquez Vado, was in the house, a 38-year-old teacher from Ponferrada, who worked at the Santa Barbara School in the Leonese town of Matarosa, Matarosa, de, del, sil. On Sunday night it was confirmed that Silvia Burgos, who was number four on the PSOE list for Degana, had been elected counselor. She went with her colleagues to the PSOE party at the El Forno Bar, in Cerrito, Degana. She was accompanied by her brother, since, since her separation with the threats that she suffered from her, although she did not report them for not harming her children, her relatives never left her alone. Around two in the morning she received a call from her ex-husband. You're already a counselor, I'm sure you're very happy, but you're going to pay for it, witnesses say the man said. Between five and half past five in the morning on Monday, the minor Jose Manuel Alvarez arrived at the home of his ex-wife. They slept in the Silvia Brugos house, her father, Manuel Angel Brugos Alvarez, a 61-year-old retired minor, her mother, Isabel Rodriguez Garcia, her brother Roberto, 33 years old, her boyfriend Jorge and her two children. At that moment, the minor attacked Silvia and Jorge's cars, destroying the windows and puncturing the wheels. Then the massacre. Alvarez grabbed a mace and smashed the front door. He climbed the stairs and broke the glass door to the upper floor. A heinous crime was about to take place. Frightened, the members of the family went out into the corridor with what they were wearing, to meet Jose Manuel Alvarez, who had no mercy. There was a struggle, as the minor also suffered injuries to his head, hands and face. When the civil guard arrived at the house, they found the body of the head of the family, 
Manuel Angel Burgos, in the room of his son Roberto, as if he had wanted to defend him. Roberto Burgos was dying in the corridor. Jorge Marquez also lost his life in the room he shared with Silvia, who also suffered a back injury that affected her lung. Not even the ex-mother-in-law was spared. Jose Manuel Alvarez attacked her in the children's room, who had been listening to the screams of the massacre until then. When he saw her attacking his grandmother, the six-year-old son asked full of fear, Dad, what are you doing? Perhaps this innocent question cooled the violence of his mother, who decided to leave, leaving behind a gruesome scene. It was Silvia Brugos herself who notified the civil guard, around a quarter to six in the morning. She then called her uncle, Pepe Elda ALSA, and his wife, Ines Rodriguez, her mother's sister. When the civil guard patrol arrived in Degana, they found that the alleged murderer had not yet left the area. They blocked his way, but he fled after colliding with the agents. A device was immediately established to locate the alleged murderer. In his escape, he had taken the road to Leon, so he contacted the Villablino barracks to set up a trap to catch him. He was located in the town of Matarosa del Sil, some 50 kilometers from Degana, around 8 in the morning, two long hours after the triple crime. When he was arrested, he assured that he had gone to pick up his children and that at that moment he had been attacked. Alvarez Fernandez presented various erosions, apparently the result of the struggle with his victims. He was taken to the Ponferrada Hospital to receive care for his minor injuries, and was later taken to the Civil Guard headquarters in Kangista, Del, Narcia, whose judicial police team is in charge of investigating the case. The man will go to court on Tuesday morning or the day after tomorrow Wednesday. The emergency medical teams tried to revive Roberto Brugos and Jorge Marquez, without success. The two died moments after the arrival of the emergencies. Silvia Brugos and her mother were taken to the Carmen and Severo Ochoa Hospital in Cangas del Narcia. The mother suffered a severe blow to the head and a chest injury. Her injuries were of a slight nature, and although it was speculated that she was discharged throughout yesterday, she preferred to leave her admitted, since she suffers from heart disease. Her daughter was transferred to the Central Hospital of Oviedo, in order to be operated on. Although the injury that she suffers in the dorsal part of her is serious, she does not fear for her life, according to hospital sources and the government delegation. Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez was a withdrawn and not very social person, according to what is said in Cabo Owls. He didn't have too many friends there. He was most popular at the Cerrito Mine, Coto Monero Cantabrico, where he had worked for about 20 years. He was very close to getting early retirement. The nickname by which his colleagues knew him was, El Positivo, although some say that they also called him, El Renegado. He does not have a criminal record, but he has suffered various problems due to drug use. He lived with her mother, who also did not have a good relationship with Silvia or her family, in a large house surrounded by a hedge and a fence. The defendant had no complaints of abuse. May 24, 2011 Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez, the Leonese minor accused of killing the father, brother and boyfriend of his ex-wife, Silvia Brugos, with a machete, in the Asturian town of Degana, had not received any complaints of ill-treatment or threats. The government delegate in Asturias, Antonio Trevin, told the media today that, despite the fact that an event as tragic as this usually causes many rumors, the truth is that the civil guard has no record that the woman had received threats from your ex. Before some testimonies reflected today in different media that Sylvia Brugos received a threatening call from her ex-husband a few hours before the crimes occurred, Trevin has specified that there is no evidence that it was so and that he would be surprised. The government delegate has said that, although he cannot deny it outright, he bases his opinion on the detailed investigation being carried out by the civil guard and on the fact that the ex-wife had been elected that same night as counselor for Degana by the PSOE formation in which the government delegate is also active. However, he has recognized that the woman perhaps was uneasy, as is always the case when there is a separation, and more so when she is also not friendly, but that she never filed a complaint with the civil guard or in the health field or in support of abused women. 
The colonel in charge of the Civil Guard of Asturias, Jose Maria Feliz, has confirmed that they did not have any news, communication, background or suspicion that this outcome could be reached. He added that, the investigation is ongoing and there is no news of note, except that today a statement will be taken from the detainee and that tomorrow he will go to court. It was not the first threat, but Sylvia did not expect this. May 24, 2011 At 5.44 in the morning yesterday, Vicky Fernandez's phone rang and on the other end the voice of her friend Sylvia Burgos, come for my children, this wretch has entered and stabbed us all. Are you okay, what's up? No, come for the children. Vicky said that she would leave immediately but she couldn't. The civil guard was already giving instructions so that no one would leave the houses. The killer could be hiding out there. A few minutes earlier, Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez, a 42-year-old miner, separated from Silvia, 36, had arrived in Digana, the Asturian town where Silvia, her ex-wife, and the couple's two children live. He punctured the tires of the cars, took out the machete, maybe also a knife, and broke down the door of the family home. He killed Silvia's boyfriend, brother and father, Jose, Jorge, Marquez, a 36-year-old physical education teacher, Roberto Burgos, 33, and Manuel Angel Burgos, 61. One of the neighbors came home vomiting and he told Vicky, there is not one death, there are three. The children were saved, a boy and a girl, aged 6 and 11, the grandmother and the mother, Sylvia. The mother has heart problems but her wounds do not seem to be cared for. Sylvia, transferred yesterday to the Kangas de Narcia Hospital, has something else, but her life is not in danger either, she is sedated, but she knows everything. Except for the two women and the children, no one knows very well the details of the carnage that put an end to Sylvia's festive night at dawn. Her party, the PSOE, achieved four councillors in the town, she was the fourth, and they have the possibility of governing with agreements. But the socialist comrades were not there yesterday for recounts or electoral strategies. Yesterday Sylvia was happy. She had been very involved in this project, she believed it herself. She was in the next town celebrating and then they went back to sleep, her and her boyfriend. The children's father, separated from Sylvia, had kept them with him over the weekend and returned them to Digana in the afternoon. They stayed with the grandmother while Sylvia lengthened the election night. The family home has two floors and is escorted by the superb Asturian mountain, these days greener than ever. Sylvia married very young and left town. A little over two years ago, when he separated from her, she returned to her family and her children. There are no complaints in the city council for ill treatment, but the separation was not being a pleasant process, according to Vicky. She is a shy and sweet person, she does not tell many things, nor do I ask her. I remember her as a child, with the device in her mouth, then she left and I lost track of her. When she returned to her town, her old network of friends was a thing of the past, but Vicky became friends with her because they took a home help course together, to care for her dependents. Later, Sylvia took another geriatrics course with Vicky's daughter, precisely. When Vicky decided that she was no longer running for the elections, Sylvia was the candidate. Her political life has given her a network of companions. In the photos that her friend has of her, Sylvia is seen happily pasting up posters at the opening of the campaign, and also happy with her boyfriend, who is now dead, traveling through Spain. I think they already plan to move in together. He had obtained a teacher's position in Torino, Leon. She is a very pretty woman. She has a great guy and those clothes that she wears, I think she keeps them, are her clothes when she was with the other, the ones he liked, Vicky continues, still groggy and hardly sleeping. Her house was yesterday the general headquarters where friends and fellow party members gathered to share the consternation, the same one that has shaken the entire town, a small village. Also Sylvia's Facebook, says her friend, is private. For him. Vicky barely remembers the alleged murderer, she doesn't face him, she knows that he is tall and that he had a shaved head. The civil guard chased him yesterday morning, on the mine's private road. 
The fleeing Opal Astra jumped over a wall and continued until they hunted him down in Matarosa. I had it all planned, I hope he rots. It was not the first time that he threatened her, or that he bothered her or punctured her car, but I think she did not expect something like this, she laments. The neighbors had a ghostly aspect yesterday, among journalists here and there. In the city hall, the manifestos of rigor, condemnation and condolences were issued, and three days of mourning were decreed. The acting mayor, Jamie Gareth Flores, a miner about to retire, recalls that his tenure began years ago with another brutal death in the town, that of Sheila, a girl who was found shot dead. There are still signs in the area calling for justice. The case has not been resolved. And now he leaves the mayor's office with three stabbed to death. No, he didn't have a good day yesterday. The provincial court sentences the author of the triple crime of Degana to 89 years in prison. February 20, 2014 Section 3 of the Provincial Court of Oviedo has today sentenced Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez to 89 years and two months in prison for killing his ex-wife's father, brother and boyfriend, and trying to kill the latter and her mother, in May 2011, in Degano. The sentence establishes 25 years in prison for murder, 20 years for attempted murder, two sentences of 15 years for homicide, 10 years for attempted murder, one year and two months for trespassing and three years and one day for a crime of assault. The sentence also establishes the penalty of deprivation of the right to attend and reside in the municipality of Degana and Ponferrada for a period of 10 years beyond the duration of the aforementioned custodial sentences and the penalty of prohibition from approaching less than 500 meters to Silvia Brugos Rodriguez and Isabel Rodriguez Garcia. From their homes or work or training centers, as well as any other place that they frequent and to communicate with them, by any type of means, for the same period. The ruling establishes a total amount of 1,270,497 euros in compensation for civil liability. The author of the triple crime will appeal. The defense of Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez plans to appeal the sentence, which he has considered excessive. The defense lawyer, Javier Ordonez, has declared moments after the ruling was made public that, in principle, he does see reasons to appeal this ruling, about which he had not yet had time to speak with his client. In the absence of studying the content of the sentence in detail, the defense of Jose Manuel Alvarez considers that there is sufficient basis to appeal for an error of appreciation in the evidence, because, according to Ordonez, he does not include the modifying circumstances. In his opinion, there are sufficient reasons to appeal the circumstances of cruelty and treachery contained in the sentence. After considering that the penalty imposed on his client is very excessive, the lawyer has indicated that it should also be noted that the court of the provincial court of Oviedo that tried him has not taken into account all the theses raised by the defense. A tragedy that struck Degana in 2011. That May 22, Silvia Burgos was happy, since she had been elected councillor in the municipal elections held that day. She was celebrating with her classmates when she received a call from her ex-husband, with a terrible message, you're already a councillor, I'm sure you're very happy, but you're going to pay for it. That afternoon, the alleged perpetrator of the crime had been with the couple's 6 and 11-year-old children at his mother's house in Caboals, in Leon, on the other side of the port of Cerrito. He then had left them at his wife's house, in the Otero de Degana neighborhood. There was nothing foreshadowing the blood orgy that would take place that same morning, around 5. The ex-miner punctured the tires of the two family cars, possibly to prevent anyone from escaping, and then forced the door of the house with a hammer. This, according to the version of the accusations, because the defense argues that he entered the house without forcing the door. The first victims were Silvia Burgos herself and her sentimental partner, the primary school teacher Jorge Marquez, who were sleeping together and were savagely stabbed. The woman declared that she had not seen her ex-husband, because the house was in absolute darkness, but she did recognize her voice as she uttered wild screams. Then there was the stabbing death of Manuel Angel and Roberto Burgos, the father and brother of the socialist counselor. The defense maintains that Jose Manuel Alvarez was only trying to take his children and did not enter the house armed. 
As he assures, he snatched a knife from the relatives, who were attacking him, and simply defended himself. The Supreme Court reduces the sentence for the triple crime of Degana by 10 years. October 14, 2014 The criminal chamber of the Supreme Court has reduced the sentence imposed on the author of the triple crime of Degana, Asturias, by 10 years. The resident of Caboales de Abajo, Leon, Jose Manuel Alvarez Fernandez, who on May 23, 2011 stabbed to death the partner of her ex-wife, as well as her father and brother. Similarly, he caused serious injuries to her ex-spouse and also to her mother. The facts were tried at the Provincial Court of Oviedo at the beginning of the year and Alvarez was sentenced to sentences that totaled 89 years in prison, establishing the maximum effective fulfillment of the sentence at 40 years. The defense appealed to the Supreme Court, which resolved on September 24 with a reduction in the years imposed by the Asturian Court to 30, considering that the Court of Instance did not take into account the different classification of the crimes in concurrence when establishing the penalties. The sentence considered the defendant responsible for a consummated crime of murder, another of attempted murder, two consummated homicides and a third attempted. Added to these were the crimes of breaking and entering and attacking the civil guard agents. To these are added other accessory penalties and more than 1 million euros in compensation for civil liability. The Supreme Court does not address other arguments of the defense such as the absence of cruelty, the defenses of mental alienation, insurmountable fear and even self-defense. The Court of Oviedo established 40 years of effective serving of the sentence, starting from the fact that two crimes for which the conviction was committed were threatened with a prison sentence of more than 20 years, and, therefore, in application of the penal code, it corresponds fix the deprivation of liberty at 40 years. But the question is, argues the Supreme Court, if the same can be said when, as in the case under examination, one of them was assessed as attempted. It occurs then, the argument continues, that attempted murder corresponds to a sentence of 5 to 20 years in prison, which is why effective compliance is set at 30 years. As a result of this, the prosecutor's office suggests the correction of the penalties of, the attempted crimes of homicide and murder, of which the Leonese was found guilty, so that they are punished with 10 years less one day and 20 years less one day respectively when in the judgment of the court of Oviedo they were set at 10 and 20 years. It is a legally founded request, which, in addition, even if it is purely symbolic, benefits the convicted person, so it must also be accepted. The murderer took the life of Jorge Marquez, who was the boyfriend of his ex-wife, Silvia Burgos. Also that of her father, Manuel Angel Burgos Alvarez, 61 years old, and that of Silvia's brother, Roberto Burgos, only 33 years old. Silvia and her mother, Alicia Rodriguez, suffered numerous injuries, but both saved their lives. And all this, in the presence of her two children, 6 and 11 years old, Sergio and Marta. His escape was short-lived, as the civil guard detained him only a few hours later in the municipality of Torino in Bersiano. Of course, the Degana triple murder case is a tragic and complex episode that left a profound impact on the local community and society in general. The detailed depiction of the events, as well as the subsequent legal proceedings, paint a grim picture of domestic violence and revenge, and raise serious questions about justice and the legal system. The final conviction of José Manuel Álvarez Fernández and the subsequent reduction of the sentence by the Supreme Court shows the complexity and multifaceted nature of the case. In addition to the prison sentence, additional restrictions and compensation for civil liability underline the seriousness of the crimes committed. The defendant's defense, however, considers the sentence excessive and has expressed its intention to appeal. The shortening of the sentence and the discussion of mitigating or aggravating circumstances, as well as the defense attorney's statements, illustrate the complicated nature of the legal system and the difficulty of reaching a resolution that satisfies all parties. The Degana tragedy will remain in the memory of those who lived through it and knew it, and will continue to be a reminder of the deadly consequences that can arise from fractured family relationships and uncontrolled violence. Conclusion the story of the Degana triple murder, which occurred in 2011, 
is a complex and grim illustration of the violence and revenge that left a deep scar on the local community and society at large. The detailed narrative of the events, along with the subsequent legal process, reveals not only the seriousness of the crimes committed, but also the inherent difficulty of the legal system in seeking justice. The initial conviction of José Manuel Álvarez Fernández, as well as the subsequent reduction of the sentence by the Supreme Court, reveal the complexities and multifaceted nature of the case. Although the sentences imposed reflect the severity of the acts, the defense considers the sentence excessive and plans to appeal. This further highlights the intricate nature of the law and how the interpretation and application of mitigating or aggravating circumstances can lead to divergent rulings. Beyond the legal aspects, Digana's tragedy is a grim reminder of the fatal consequences that can arise from fractured family relationships and violence that seems uncontrolled. The details of the case, from the initial threat to the brutal murders, paint a harrowing picture of a torn family in a traumatized community. The victims and the compensation are just one part of a larger story that will continue to resonate in the memory of those who lived it and knew it. The escape of the murderer and his subsequent capture, along with the debate about penalties and legal procedure, symbolize the ongoing struggle between justice, empathy, and understanding in cases of such magnitude. Degana's tragedy is therefore not only a reflection of human violence but also a microcosm of the complexity of the legal system and how the search for justice can be a long and tortuous road, full of nuances and challenges. Finally, the Degana triple crime case can be seen as a call to reflection on the prevention of domestic violence, society's response to such acts, and the way in which the legal system deals with these painful and complex incidents. The resolution of the case, while imperfect, highlights the need for a more compassionate and comprehensive approach to victims, as well as careful consideration of all factors involved in determining justice. Dear YouTube and iVooks listeners and viewers, it has been a pleasure sharing this time with you. If you liked what you have heard or seen, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel and leave us your comments. We would love to hear your opinions and continue to grow with you. We wish you a happy summer full of joy, relaxation, and good times. We hope to see you again soon. Take care of yourselves and enjoy each day. Until next time.